Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Pirate Speed here, and today we're going to be watching Beast Coast vs. LGD, specifically watching uh, Ame on his Life Stealer. I think this hero is extremely good. We're also going to check in on the Axe gameplay of Faith Beyond. I'm pretty sure my webcam is cutting it off. I have this, uh, my basically I went to a Halloween party with my, my girlfriend and she put on some makeup, so hopefully you guys can appreciate the pirate makeup. I had like a, where's the shirt? Oh, look at my pants. Look at my pants. Look at these pants. I'm a pirate, guys. Crazy. Oh, I didn't make my bed. Shit! I'm gonna get some comments calling me a slob. Which I am, so, you know, they're right. Either way, let's get into it. Let's watch some... Some life stealer, some axe. I did want to quickly look at the drafts uh, from an overall standpoint. We saw a pretty odd opener. We see the tiny... Honestly, I will say Beast Coast went for a very SA draft. Like, I swear, dude, this looks exactly like Thunder Predator drafts. It's just a bunch of early game nukes and then a hard carry. This seems to be kind of the main theme of these SA teams, which is pick four heroes that run around and can chain stun people and kill them. Right? <laughs> and then a hard carry. Uh, and then LGD went for a much more meta draft. Quote unquote, much more meta draft. We had the Marcy, the Leshrac, you know, uh, Disruptor even as a five. We didn't see, I mean,. I guess these heroes are kind of meta. Like, Tiny's been popular this tournament. Nyx has been popular. Uh, popular. Seam has been popular. Mars is just a stupid hero. Somehow, even after being nerfed 8 million times in a row, is still in the meta. But either way, we're going to be focused on the Lifestealer here today. So this is definitely not a lane that Lifestealer wins really easily. Uh, one of the downsides of Lifestealer against Mars in particular is the fact that Lifestealer actually... Well, even though he's actually quite a bit ahead, he must have gotten first blood. Yeah, so he got first blood. But one of the downsides of this matchup, uh, potentially, is the fact that Lifestealer doesn't have a range creep secure. And that could cause him to get denied early on. However, let's actually see if that first blood was in the lane. Oh, it was. How did they pick up a first blood in the lane? Let's actually see how that plays out, because that's really important. And usually as Lifestealer, you're not contributing too much to fighting early on. You might be poking the offlaner a little bit, but you're typically not actually looking for kills. So how does this actually shape up... It must just be the Nyx getting caught out of position, right? I can't really see how else that could play out. On top of that, I do expect this matchup early on to be slightly Mars favored because, as I was saying, Lifestealer doesn't have a range creep secure, so often he can get pressured off of it. However, I will say that Nyx is such a garbage laner, typically, that it, it might not make you know that big of a difference. So, uh, yeah, let's actually just quickly skip ahead. How do we see a first blood come out here? He's playing the wave, not overextending. It's good Lifestealer fundamentals. Like, anytime you're playing Lifestealer, you don't want to chase past the creep wave. Most people have this really, really bad mindset when they're trying to be a carry player that, I'm playing Lifestealer, I'm playing Animage, I need to hit them a million times. It's just a bad idea. It's a bad idea until you hit specific spikes. For instance, here, I guess they feel that the level, um, the level 3 on Lifestealer is really important. Now, Mars doesn't really scale with levels too well. You know, Spear of Mars scales okay but it doesn't really help you consistently trade not against life stealer so i think they just see this as an opportunity to get aggressive um and is this the kill oh they just chase him down he must have an oof yeah i was gonna say <laughs> and i love this oof pickup from zinq and the reason why it's great and you might be like why does he need an oof he has ghoul frenzy from life stealer why does he need an oof it's because it's a really, really free lane. And when you have really, really free lanes, it's really good to buy Oov to double down on the fact that your lane should win, theoretically, extremely hard uh, based on trading, right? Mars and Nyx don't trade one-on-one -on -one with Lifestealer for shit, right? They don't. They don't even trade with Marcy one-on-one -on -one too well either. So it's just a game where they can put uh, a lot of aggression. So I love the Oov coming out from the Marcy. From there, the Life Stealer. Interestingly enough, he picks up an Orb of Venom of his own. I would imagine that means he will upgrade that into Orb of Corrosion. Uh, the only reason I find it weird is Marcy has one. However, I guess he doesn't expect the Marcy to lane with him anymore, which is reasonable. Now, with Phase Boots, typically what you want to be doing is kind of, I think Ame does it here, is you basically once you have the item, you click it, hit them twice, and then back up. Or if they're far up, you hit them like four or five times. But basically, you click phase boots, and then you burst at them. What a lot of people do wrong is they just click the phase boots at some really random times, and they don't abuse it to quickly close the gap using the turn and movement speed increase. Uh, so, you know, just constantly hitting Whisper in and out, 
just poking the Mars down, shipping down his HP, now looking to side pull, right? I was going to say, no way, he's just farming the camp. So he's going to side pull, bully the Mars off the wave, right? Kills the range creep just to secure it. And then, yeah, wow, gets a full wave away from the Mars here, which is huge. Full wave denied, um, not actually denied, the Mars got the XP, but a huge deal there. Uh, that was really well done to get off the side pull. And most carry players don't do that. Most carry players are not good enough. They just forget, right? They forget to pull. Even in, you know, they'll do it in hard lanes. They'll, like, remember to pull the small camp. But rarely in a winning lane will you see an aggressive pull. And then have them zone the offlaner off the pull based on the matchup. So he does pick up the corrosion, which makes sense. Mars actually has some severe armor problems. Unless he has phase boots, which he does. So he's solved that problem. Um... But yeah, okay, so he is shoving in the lane now. So he's not really looking to shut down the Mars. Shoving in the lane, gonna actually... Oh, he is contesting him. So he's pressuring him under tower here. But you would imagine he's just gonna... Yeah, so typically at this point in the lane, you can't really pressure the Mars, not conveniently. So he'll just kind of farm up the large camp as much as he can. As he... <laughs> Hits him a bunch there. Uh, this is best case scenario. And now... Whoa, he's TPing in? What the... Is someone going to TP top? That's crazy to me. The reason why that's crazy to me is conceptually in my head. Now, yes, this is a dive. Like, don't get me wrong. This is a relatively hard dive from um, from Beast Coast. So if there is an opportunity to commit, it's going to be here. Thank God they found the glimpse. Otherwise, this could have been a pretty bad situation where, you know, you mass TP, but you don't get the kill. But they group up, and this is going to transition into a very early tier one. Right, so they do get the tier 1 off of this. It, that enables the Lifestealer to farm quite a bit. He still gets to farm up here. And to be fair, no one on the enemy team is farming top. The only reason that TP surprises me is Lifestealer, he's not weak at this point. You're okay. You're definitely pretty strong with the Corrosion um, and maxed out Frenzy. But I don't know. I just Typically, the concept on Lifestealer is stick in your lane. But he makes the rotation, takes the tower, and someone has to go farm top, right? Yeah, so Marcy will try. Looks like she'll be able to. And he's going to stick on the bottom side now. So they actually look for a kill. And he's going to jungle. Not jungle. He's going to play the map pretty aggressively. This looks crap. Are they really going to commit to this? I guess they can find Gohira. Maybe. Or not. <laughs> okay, they find him. Uh, Alright. So he's going to farm at the bottom side. I mean, this is typical carry gameplay. Farm at bottom side. Uh, you know, the only thing he has to fear is Chrono into Nick stun. Uh, he's not even going to die to Chrono in the Nick stun. I mean, Chrono to Nick stun with Freezing Field. They need a lot to kill him. And I mean a lot to kill him. Uh, like a ton to kill him. And so this is why it's kind of a good lifestealer game. They don't really have the heroes that just kill him. Uh, they can kill him when Rage is done. They have so much magic damage. But, okay, he's going to rotate towards mid. So playing a very active lifestealer this game... Really trying to push the lead that they have. I mean, they know they won their lanes clearly very hard. They won three lanes pretty significantly in every lane. And so they're going to take the mid tower. After that, I would imagine you jungle on the way back. Yeah, just be efficient. You can let one of your heroes that can jungle take the lane. It's always a nice efficiency play to do that. If you're playing a hero like Naga Siren or TB, and you have a support that's low level or needs an item next to you, let them take the lane. Right? Even though it's going to slow down your farm a little bit, it's going to overall be a net increase for your team. And it's something that most players don't do as a carry player. They're like, I need the creep wave, I need the creep wave, go to the creep wave. And they grief their teammates as he looked for the infest to save. But unfortunately, oh, he could die here. No, okay, he's too fast. I wonder what he'll do at level 10. Most people typically just skill their ability. Yeah, so he'll skill the rage. Okay. I honestly think the rage movement speed at 10 is not bad, though. It's 12%. You freaking zoom. You actually zoom. But I kind of, yeah, I kind of like the concept of taking the rage movement speed. It seems kind of good. But okay, he's maxing out the rage. It's going to help him fight early on. He'll push out bottom. So taking a bit of the farm away from the Marcy, but okay. T being mid. Wow, he's so active this game. He's going to run at the tiny. Really interesting, and he even so one big thing to note as well is this item build, right? He picks up a magic wand, which really tells me that he wants to fight. And from my perspective, I think it's mainly because they're winning the game. I think it's largely because they're winning the game. Um, on top of that, it's not really his job to one v nine carry. What I mean by that is, like, this Lesh 
is not really a hero that plays well with Axe, which sounds weird. And to some extent, when it has its Bloodstone, it can, because of how stupid Bloodstone is right now. Lush can get so active so early. But Lush wants to be farming in the early game for the most part until Bloodstone. Now, maybe the Life Stealer becomes a bit more passive now. I mean, there's two options. He can continue to play with his team and Fest Bomb the Lash, enable the Lash. Or he can say now, okay, Lesh is online. He can, he can, you know, be the guy who TPs to help the axe, to save the axe, play with the axe. Um, so they go for an Infest Bomb. Oh, it was an Infest Bomb TP. Unfortunately, they don't catch. They're running ahead, though. Wow, they feel so strong. This play is psychotic. This is them just asserting dominance here, right? Because they are saying, my axe is 6-1. I'm 103 with Giga CS. They're 7k ahead with a 3 uh kill lead that's insane how hard they're getting out farmed that is crazy how hard they're getting out farmed actually insane how is this a 7k lead wow, i guess it actually is that's crazy but yeah i don't mind this play only because they're just saying like hey we're so far ahead that we don't care we're just gonna initiate we don't care they should have cared oh uh, they really should have cared because they ran up blind lesh ran up blind they find the lesh wow it just doesn't matter huh okay so what is he he does he instantly pop out? You're not okay. Yeah, he pops out on the CM onto the onto the Mars, instantly kill him too. And now they're gonna be able to. Oh my gosh, what is that? Not max time walk? Oh, it is. He just didn't get it up in time. Oh, it wasn't even close. Yeah. So them that's them ex in, uh, asserting dominance and a uh, kind of an unfortunate play from from Beast Coast here because I really, I definitely feel like it's hard to say hindsight's Giga twenty twenty here, but. They have no follow-up damage. I think he should kind of know that on the Void. You used your Freezing Field. That is literally all the Chrono follow-up. That's it, right? That's literally all of it. And so Chronoing an Axe here with 2k HP and a Vanguard and a Blade Mail is extremely optimistic. And I will admit this is a big misplay from Beast Coast. I mean, I, I'm a bit surprised Beast Coast made this play. I'll be real. I just respect them a lot as players. I think... Their ability to understand team fights and team fighting is really, really good. So yeah, I mean, definitely something I would have expected them to say, okay, let's just back off. We got our Lesh kill, great. Get out and split the map. We know LGD is top. But LGD kind of catches them off guard. They get confident on the Lesh kill, and they do too much. And once again, we just see him TPing in. So well, he, yeah, he's just he's just happy to be active this game. As he consistently TPs in, unfortunately, wasn't able to save the Axe here. Does run forward. Pokes the, the Void. Typically on Life Stealer, you just hit the first person you see so you don't get kited. And once again, we're going to see him connect with the Axe. So over and over again, he's actually assuming the role of the guy who's playing fast. So they have the Desto now. I doubt they'll jump to CM, right? He doesn't want to jump to CM. Okay, they take the kill. Unfortunately, CM canceled Axe Blink, so they couldn't go for the Mars there. That was a good play by the CM just to kind of go down swinging. Um... So maybe they'll swing across. Okay, so, yep. They're just swinging across. And they're playing... Yeah, this is the crazy thing about LGD, but they know they have the Disruptor. Like, when you have Disruptor on your team and you're a carry player and you're ahead, you can look to play higher tempo because you can kind of trust your Disruptor, especially at a higher level, is just going to be able to make this type of play, right? He's going to be able to just... If you even remotely find someone, lock them down, right? Bring them to your team. And that's exactly what they do. And are they really going to run at Mars? No, they're going to Roche. Okay, I was going to say, that's crazy if they just keep running at Mars or the next hero they see. So they get the Aegis. I think they can push. The deep push from, from Beast Coast is pretty good, though, because they can Nick stun into Tiny Combo into, into Spear. There's a lot of Blink stun from uh, Beast Coast, so it's, it's not very straightforward for him to walk up the high ground. His HP pool is actually overall really low. He has arm lit when that gets turned on, but his HP pool is actually not high at all as he TP's bottom to clear it out. So... Interesting decision to TP bottom here. The reason why I say that is it kind of opens up the opportunity for the enemy to go mid. And it also kind of just shows where you are. Like, they know you TP'd, right? It's very obvious. And so they can kind of swing towards mid. And we see an actual jump. Okay, so it's just LGD finding some kills, I think. Maybe? Oh, no, Axe goes down. So that is the Beast Coast finding the jump. Looks like the Beast Coast team was starting to run towards him. But he doesn't care at all. He's ignoring it. He doesn't think he can die, which honestly, he probably can't die. As he's going to use the wave to heal up. I don't know if they're going to try, but he gets off and Gohira misses the stun, unfortunately. Is that just a dead Nyx? Yeah, that's a dead Nyx. Well, that happens. What happened? It was just a really, it was just a short stun. I want to see this. 
Yeah, it was just too short. They weren't going to kill him anyway. That was really ambitious. They were just trying to poke him down. But that was really ambitious. That was extremely ambitious. And unfortunately gets the next kill. It doesn't really change too much, but it does make mean that the Tiny is wasting his time and not farming. So there's that. Picks up the Basher. A little bit surprised to see. I would have I would have kind of liked the idea of a Halberd. Just because I feel like he's already pretty unkillable. So I kind of enjoy the concept of just making him completely unkillable. But perhaps he just feels like, okay, I, I'm probably unkillable even if I have Basher. Basher gives you some HP too. Um, and being able to stick on top of these targets, even potentially bash the Void is huge. Bashing CM is unironically a big deal. It's she's freezing feeling to, to cancel out her armor. So they're going to find the Void. How do they make this movement? This is a really key movement. So their top side, what vision do they have that makes them go bottom? Or do they preemptively do it? Yeah, they kind of just preemptively do it. They saw the Nyx. Marcy Bates here. So kind of a really great play from Zing Q as the Disruptor just TPs in like a psycho. But that enables them to catch him. What I love about LGD and what, what it's so cool about their carry gameplay, this Lifestealer gameplay, is they're willing to take risks based on their advantages. They're willing to send out the Marcy, say, hey, go kill yourself. You know, go get caught, literally get caught. If you get caught, they will die. They cannot fight us no matter, you know, how well they play it. There's no chance. And that's exactly what happens. One decent call. It was a very good call, but it was a one-man call. Is good enough to just instantly take out the fight as they find the Tiny and the Nyx as well. I don't think they can stop this push. The D push is <clears throat> pretty decent, but Axe gets the call. Rage movement speed is really impressive. I love this talent. It's really great, man. Like, the 12 movement speed is so much. It's actually so much. 30% bonus movement speed. He goes from 365 to 474, and with phase boots, he's basically max movement speed. Pretty insane. So easy to follow up. As they go on the Lash, he doesn't have Aegis on Lash. This is a good opportunity. Oh my gosh, the Bloodstone keeps him alive. It's a great Chrono. No, don't let him heal. Burn his Aegis. Okay. <laughs> All right, they get the Aegis. Glimpse comes out, though, and he's super dead on Tiny. And maybe he... Yeah, they're going to take this fight. So they might try to go on Zen Q. He can heal him up with Infest. Infest is still up. You can take a risk here. As they go into K1. So Rage being down, but... Oh, oh, oh my god, that Bash. That's great. And that's what I mean by bashing the CM. You take her out of the freezing field and her armor just, you know, it goes back to zero. So good initiation. He's got to go for an Infest to get out here. He'll find it. That's a perfect Infest. He's going to heal up Faith Beyond. And does it dispel you? Or was his time dilation just running out? Looks like it dispelled him, right? Oh, it dispels you. I didn't know that. So Infest dispels you. So it gets rid of the time dilation, which is huge because it's going to enable the eventual rage. Does he die here? They might kill him. Oh, rage comes back up. Is that time? Did K1 use time walk? No. Okay, he's super dead. So great play from, from Beast Coast. This is what they're known for, man. Beast Coast is so damn good at team fighting. And really a big big mess up from the left track, just sticking around for too long. Huge, huge turnaround. That's really key. This void is actually getting massive, man. He's really coming online. So, Beast Coast Fashion, they turn it around, man. Their team fighting is something else. This is why they love these drafts. You pick four heroes that just have a bunch of nukes and stuns, and it's like, if the enemy if the enemy messes up, you will kill them, right? And I, and I think these teams really like believing in themselves to just find the cash and outplay their enemy with these types of drafts. Obviously, LGD wins this game, so it doesn't work out, but I, I really respect how they draft. I, I really like it. It's very straightforward, in my opinion, but it's effective. If you're good at it. So he gets the Mind Breaker. That's super good. You know, uh, it's just great. Can prevent the Carapace, prevent the Toss. It's such a high damage item too. And it's great against this Void after his BKB ends too. It can silence him at a random time and get him killed. It also just kind of enables the Bash to come out a lot of times. So Faith Beyond misses the call, but he's going to TP mid. Finds an Arcane Rune. Arcane Rune Axe is really powerful. You can initiate so much quicker, so much faster. As they're going to smoke. So they're going to run in. Going deep, looking for the kills. They're sweeping. They think they're going to catch people in the retreat. No, maybe they... Okay, so they... Oh, man. They read the movement. And K1 is super dead. There's no living this. You know, he's gone. That's that's a read and a half from LGD. They just expect Beast Coast to try to keep the map open, farm one more creep wave, be a little bit greedy. And that's, that's a read... That's... That's a clinic from LGD. I mean, the fact that they, you know saw that beast coast would do that i mean maybe they watch replays or maybe that's just intuition knowing hey these pro teams know when they're losing they got to keep the map open right they got to split until they have chrono uh they got to keep the map wide open when that's when that's the case 
as they find the shard on the life stealer. And the life stealer shard is extremely good. It's a 50% movement speed slow, which is a lot. Even in combination with Ghoul Frenzy, it's still nice to have. It's way bigger as a slow. And then it's 50% life steal, right? On top of that, you deal 2% of the max health per attack on the target from real heroes. So also, everyone that hits them deals a bonus 2% of the target's max health, and it and they life steal, including spells, right? So even Leshrac, if someone's open wounds, is getting Giga Heal off them. It's really, really strong as he gets Mana Burn here. Bit of a problem. Big initiation from them, but oh, yeah, the call goes off. So you're just going to take out the CM. Great retargeting there, understanding, okay, I can kill everybody except for Mars. I mean, he can kill Mars if Mars is back this back his turn towards him and he's not BKB'd, but no need to waste his time on Mars when Rage is up, especially with Aegis. To be fair, maybe he would hit the Mars if he didn't have Aegis because he would want to kite out on the end of Rage because otherwise he might get chronoed and die when that happens. But with Aegis, it's much more reasonable for him to push forward, kind of take that risk and and make, uh, you know, and get the kill onto the CM as they're going to find the Void and oh, that's a bash. And so how did he know to connect here? Are they, were they just running down mid? Maybe they were just running down mid. They see the Void pushing out mid and what, Void just gets caught? Ah, uh, really shocking that Void would show like that. To be fair, he nearly lived. He nearly lived, but it would have forced Void BKB anyway. And that's rough. They do have the Tiny Treat, which is great. This is kind of their play. This is their Chrono follow-up. And it's great Chrono follow-up. Tree Volley from Tiny is some of the best Chrono follow-up in the game. It's such high damage. It's just unreliable, but Chrono makes it reliable. So I kind of like, I really like Beast Coast Draft. I do. It just doesn't work out. Their early game goes poorly, and then they have a hard time killing Lifestealer. LGD did such a great job getting the Aegis too, right? A big thing that enabled them to push this game forward was, was Ame, Honest Lifestealer, getting the Aegis and running down the lanes with it. Because otherwise, they can kill Lifestealer really easily. You have to keep in mind, Lifestealer is really weak against burst damage comps. People are like, they have all magic damage. It's a free Lifestealer game. It's like... Is it? Is it a free life stealer game? Like, are you sure? Because he could just get, like, impaled out of Nick's stun into a spear into, like, you know, freezing field into tiny... You know what I mean? Like, they can kill him. This hero only has 1600 HP uh, before it's third item. It's really not a tanky hero if you get the jump. If you find another jump, just, just so willing to pair together with this axe. Constantly on the same page, using Infest to heal himself, too. Because Infest does heal you while you're inside of the, the hero. And K1 goes for the Chrono. They're just going to wait it out. Wow, real patience to look to go on the void. They didn't consider jumping anyone else. I think they look at Beast Coast Comp and say, you are all extremely useless, except for void. Not to be fair, the Tiny's pretty tanky, but he wasn't showing at the time. So I think that's LGD just being such a damn good team. Like Teams like LGD are just so good at having uh, general target priority in, in like late, late, late game scenarios. Typically, target priority is kind of the first person you see, but... Because, like, you want to stay in position and stay as a as a bubble in Dota. You want to not really split up. There are exceptions to this. There's certain team comps, such as if you pick Storm, Spectre, Darkseer, or something like this, right? Maybe you play to jump the backline, right? You can specifically draft around jumping the backline. But most team comps don't want to do that. And even there, they stuck us a bubble, protect the Lesh. Um, and, yeah, really active life sealer. I think him, that's largely him understanding that... Uh, Beast Coast is going to fight, and because they won their lanes, they can fight back, right? They kind of felt like, okay, we're, we're... Let's actually look at the look at the graphs a little. But um, they, felt, they won their lanes, and they feel like they could fight back. Um, Beast Coast extended towards the towers quite a bit, which makes the tower... Uh, which makes the, the TPs better, and yeah, they just kind of won their lanes. They won their lanes and fought. Right, Beast Coast tried to force the issue. I mean, they have a fighting draft, right? Beast Coast picked the fighting draft, but they lost their lanes... And LGD, like, honestly, Ame, I think it's one of the only carries that would have TP'd there. Maybe I'm being stupid, but, like, he had complete free farm. He's not really at, like, some extreme timing. It's not like he had, like, an armly yet, right? Um, which is, like, your first major damage timing on Lifestealer, besides a kind of corrosion, which is what he had, to be fair. But, uh, yeah, I think they just saw, like, okay, Beast Coast is going to fight. They're going to they're gonna take a fight. Let's just, you know... Let's just take the fight, right? Let's bring our heroes, and they brought their heroes every single time. They didn't give the Be they didn't give Beast Coast the ability to pick people off. They grouped up pretty hard at this game, not the whole game, but interesting life stealer performance. Still top farm, um, and yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you've been enjoying Ti as much as I have. There's games. Uh, I wonder what game is going on right now.
Oh, I gotta tune in. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna end the video so I can watch. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be posting a ton of content, especially after TI ends. I'll kind of fill in the Dota void uh, when, you know, TI is done and people are looking for more YouTube content. I'm gonna really get back on the grind. I'm gonna be posting daily here on this channel. You can quote me on that. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.